Good evening. So, I'm Yusra Abdel Munaim, and I'm going to start out the night by asking you guys to do me a favor. Close your eyes. Come on, oh, close your eyes. You can do that. Close your eyes. So, I want you to visualize the world a hundred years ago. Now, what did you picture? Or, how about, let me give it a wild guess. Houses? Fashion, living style, furniture. Yeah. How about the sky? Has any one of you thought of what the sky might have looked like a hundred years ago? So I want to ask you guys a question. What's the first thought to pop on your brain when the word pollution is brought up? Okay. Those among you who thought of air pollution, please raise up your hands. Okay, water pollution. We have that often in Sudan, don't we? Water pollution, raise up your hands. Some of you might have thought of soil pollution and the physics freaks out there, like my own self, must have thought about radioactive pollution. But what about light pollution? Has any one of you thought about that? Now, what is light pollution? So light pollution, also known as photopollution or luminous pollution, is excessive, misdirected, or obtrusive artificial light. There are three main types of um, there are three main types of light pollution: light trespass, sky glow, and glare. So, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who would go back home midday and try to fall asleep. Just walk straight to my room, turn off the lights, close the door, and right when I'm about to sleep, my mom just burges in, slams the door open, turn the lights on, and claims she needs to find something. Now that is a simple, everyday example of light trespass. Light trespass is basically unwanted. It's basically unwanted. It's basically when unwanted light enters into one's property. So, um, how about sky glow? Anyone have any idea what that might be? Okay, so sky glow is when all the re is a combination of all reflected lights upwardly directed, and it cannot be seen unless we were in overpopulated areas. And then comes the glare. Mohammed. So that is a faint glare. The glare is the unwanted light and it can cause a serious hazard. Um, so here let me tell you a little story about the glare. When the glare, when the glare light scatters in the eye, it can cause loss of contrast. It can cause loss of contrast and um, it can temporarily blind you. So for the guys out there, which one of you have heard about the HID? Headlight intensity discharge. For the cars, come on. They're also well known by bioxenons. Okay, so these lights are three times brighter than any other halogen bulb light. And older drivers or drivers with vision impairments seem to complain often about them because they get dazzled or they get temporarily blinded. And, um, and so here we are, here's an interesting story. 60 years old, Mr. Perham, and London Time Cavi for 38 years has launched an online campaign and named it the Lightmare. So the Lightmare is basically demanding better safety regulations and safety testing of what he claims as the new minas on the roads. Now, for those among you who have not been driving in such cases or have not looked it up, data show that so many accidents have been caused by them. So now I'll divert a little and ask you guys to um, answer this little question. So am I the only one who seems to have a very hard time trying to wake up every morning? I mean, I snooze my alarm for no less than three times 
and afterwards I would like lay in bed five minutes trying to convince myself, oh yes, you can do this, you can get up, you can survive one hell of an exhausting day. And then when I finally get up, I just can't seem to move, like pain all over my joints, my tendons, stiffen stiffness and tenderness in my muscles. Am I the only one? Come on, raise up your hands if you also have that same thing. And I never seem to get satisfied with the hour of sleep I get. Like, if I sleep six hours or eight hours, I still feel the same pain. Am I the only one on that one? Okay, so luckily for you, I have done a deeper research trying to understand what's the reason behind this. I'm trying to link enzymania and fibromyalgia. So here it is, melatonin. So what is melatonin? Melatonin is a uh, melatonin is a hormone secreted by the pineal glands in the brain. It helps regulate other hormones and it maintains the body's circadian rhythm. So you're probably wondering what does this have to do with what I'm talking about? Well, here it is. So if you're, if you're exposed to light while sleeping, the melatonin, the melatonin production is suppressed. And therefore, this can cause enzymania and other health issues such as increased headaches, um, medically defined stress, um, what else you could say? Um, sometimes of obesity, some forms of obesity that are linked to lack of sleep, increased anxiety, and also melatonin for children with, um, um, with children with attention deflect hyperactivity disorder and uh, children with uh, autism. It promotes sleep for them and it reduces the seizure duration and frequency for kids with epilepsy. So here's the bomb. That's not the only effect of melatonin. So ties had been found between melatonin and two other types of cancer, breast cancer and prostate cancer. So melatonin is an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, has an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory effect. In test tubes, melatonin had been found to block, melatonin had been found to block the growth of prostate cancer, and on the other hand, low levels of melatonin stimulates, um, stimulates, the, uh, stimulates the growth of certain types of brain, uh, of certain types of breast cancer, sorry. And um, here we go. So, for those of you who have this relative, who constantly keep on asking you to turn off the lights in case you're not using them. Am I the only one who knows someone who does that? Come on, who else? I always have this person. I never understood what was the point of it. Like, why should I turn off the light? I didn't think it wasted that much energy until someday I was scrolling around in the internet and I came to figure out that at least one-fourth of the world's energy production is wasted on lighting. Do you know how much money that is? That is a 1.5 trillion dollars wasted on lighting every year. Now, um, I want you to take a look at the sky. Hamlet? Take a look at the sky, please. Now, if you were asked to compare the sky nowadays with this, what would you say? This one feels like it's been photo edited, doesn't it? Okay, this is a park in Michigan with zero light pollution. But how about this? It's over there, and this one, this one had been taken in Sudan, in a position not so far away from Shandy. That's exactly how the sky would look like with zero light pollution. But now we just take a look at the sky with barely any, sky, with barely any stars. Honestly, I can't seem to see any. So, a wise man once said, if stars were to appear once every thousand years, how would a man love? How would men believe? And how would they preserve for many generations the remembrance of the city of God that had been shown? 
But every night come out these envoys of beauty. Every night comes out these envoys of beauty and remind us of how beautiful the world is. Now, we all seem to have different definitions of beauty. But for my own self, I would define beauty with strict resemblance to the mother nature. Beauty had been reflected in all angles in the mother nature and this in the 21st century had been diminished. We barely have any features of it left. So if this talk had benefited you in any way or if you think this might leave a little bit of a change in your life, just as in perhaps manage to turn off the light before you go to sleep, please raise up your hands. Thank you, I couldn't have asked for more.